Guys, um, in the last video, we looked at how you will prepare for the uh, pre, uh, lower segment cesarean section. Now, we have to do the actual surgery, isn't it? So, basically, you have seen what cesarean section is in separate videos. Now, we are looking specifically at lower segment cesarean section. <clears throat> so, you will make the incision on the lower segment of the uterus. But abdominal incision, how will the abdominal incisions be? They can be transverse or um, uh, usually transverse because of cosmetic purposes. Abdominal incision is the first thing that you make, isn't it? So here you, we are talking about the fan and steel incision, which is like 3 cm above the pubic symphysis. So in this case, what you will do, the rectus sheath, you will not cut, right? You will only separate it. And this is a good thing because uh, there will be uh, less wound dehiscence, less chance of incisional hernia from this. Its cosmetic value is good because it's going inside, right? It's like... Um, called as a bikini cut or something, right? It is going inside and it's very cosmetically appealing. And then it is um, a blood loss. Uh, but the thing, bad thing here is blood loss is slightly more, okay? Now, uh, once you're done with the abdomen, you will go through. And then you will uh, separate uh, using uh, doins, separator, etc. You will se they also told you, you will not cut the rectus sheath. You will just separate them. Then uh, when you approach the uterus, what you will do, the peritoneum which is covering this, you have to make an incision on the peritoneum and then you will make a muscle incision. That's the uterine muscle incision. The incision can be transverse or vertical or J-shaped. Remember here, everything is on the lower segment. Lower segment will not undergo contraction and relaxation. So, there will be less chance of uh, rupture, etc. of uh, uterus in the su subsequent uh, deliveries, right? So, you can try vag vaginal birth after cesarean kind of a thing in the next delivery. So, where are we? So, uterine uh, incision, we already saw all this. The benefits of uh, transverse versus vertical etc. So you have prepared the patient guys. So now it is time to make the incision on the abdomen. So how will you make it? Let's say transverse incision modified finance 3 cm above pubic symphysis you will do. Then you will use a doyens a retractor. This, uh, this you will have to mention. Right. Uh, so you will uh, uh, retract the bladder etc. Right. So you can see here they have made the incision on the Abdomen, oh, I'm not sure why they're showing you a vertical one here, but anyways, they have put a Doyne's retractor here and the Doyne's retractor is, uh, uh, has pushed everything else down. What you're seeing here is the pink one is the uterus. Now here they are making a, the loose peritoneum on the lower segment is cut transversely. So the peritoneum is cut. Then here they are making an incision, right? on the uterus then what are they doing the incision of the lower segment is being enlarged using index finger of both hands so basically what are they doing guys abdomen wait let's try to understand what they are doing abdomen and you made that fenon steel incision you will separate the rectus sheath then the peritoneum they're making a transverse nick Slightly below the peritoneal incision, they made a muscle incision, is it? Then what will you get? You will get the membranes of the gestational sac. The membranes of the gestational sac are exposed. See here, you can see. So you are going to make a incision slightly below the peritoneal incision until the membranes of the gestational sac are exposed. You will insert two fingers and then the muscles of the lower segment are split transversely across the fibers. So this will reduce the blood loss. Do you think it's right, right uh, guys, what we are seeing? Look at this. Then what will happen? The delivery of the head, then the delivery of the trunk, and then the delivery of the placenta and membranes. Let us look at the delivery of the head. LSCS, we are looking at lower segment, cesarean section, delivery of the head. So basically, if the membranes are still intact, you will rupture them. Then... You will you be using continuous suction. Obviously, we don't have to tell you this. You would have seen all this in your operation theater, right? Once you rupture, suddenly the amniotic flu fluid will come in a gush kind of thing. Like, immediately, they'll put a suction, right? And they will uh, uh, remove the blood-mixed amniotic fluid. Blood is not coming from inside the sac, if I'm not wrong. That is because of all your cuts. The Doyen's retractor is removed. Look at this. The Doyen's retractor is removed. Once you have uh, got this amniotic fluid uh, uh, out, right? The head is delivered by hooking the head with the finger. Okay, so you, where will you put the finger? The fingers are carefully insinuated between the lower uterine flap and the head. Okay, you will put a finger and then you will put the palm below the head. By this, you will deliver the head. 
So all these things are important guys. Look at the images here. Look at this. So you put the finger and then put the palm under the head. Okay. Let's go back to delivery of the head. Actually just look at this image also. They are talking about fundal pressure uh, that is being put here. And you can see from the other view they are showing the same thing. How the baby is resting on this palm. So the head is delivered by elevation and flexion. Both elevation. You lift it and flex it. Okay, so let's go with flexion here. You will deliver the head by flexion. Otherwise in normal vaginal delivery when there is cephalic presentation we are talking about uh, uh, delivery of the head by extension, isn't it? You remember this where you have studied the mechanism of labor. We will just zoom in here. Focus here. Delivery of the head by extension. This is what is happening in normal delivery. Look at this. The delivery of the head is happening by extension. Are you able to see? But in cesarean, you are delivering the baby. How? The delivery of the baby's head happens by flexion in cesarean. Okay. Then, and the palm acts as a fulcrum. Now, you have to go back to physics and understand what a fulcrum is. This red thing here is the fulcrum, guys. See, they have marked it as fulcrum. Right? So the palm acts as a fulcrum. As the head is drawn to the incision line, so you're bringing the baby out, right? So you're bringing it to the incision line, the head. The assistant is to apply pressure on the fundus, okay? So once you're bringing the, uh, as the head is drawn to the incision, the assistant will apply pressure on the fundus. This you have already seen in the photo. Pressure on the fundus, okay? If the head is jammed, an assistant may push up the head by sterile gloved fingers, introduced into the vagina now just that got very interesting isn't it so here is the uterus and here they have made a cut they are getting the baby's head out looks like okay so the cut has become like this they say the cut the baby's head they want to get out so fundal pressure they are giving and also if um, uh, the head is jammed they can put the an assistant can put their hand a glo with gloved fingers into the vagina and push the head from here uh, you know push the head also push up the head so it's like fundal pressure, right? So if this doesn't work, if the head is jammed, so you can push the head up from vagina. Okay. The head can also be delivered using forceps. So forceps are not going out, uh, going off at all, right? Forceps they are trying to talk about even in nor uh, in cesarean delivery. Okay. Then now once the baby has uh, head has come, now you want the baby's trunk to come, isn't it? Here they are saying that as soon as the head is out, you have to do suction. But uh, not exactly seen this. Okay. Then you will deliver the shoulders. Anyways, what I have learned is once the baby is delivered, you should give oxytocin to the mother. So the uterus contracts, right? And uh, then here they are saying the rest of the body is delivered. Um, and then the baby is placed between the mother's thighs. Okay. So you should notice whether the baby cries immediately. Once it comes out, isn't it? Then uh, if the baby's cry is fine, perfectly fine, then you can do a delayed cord clamping. Three minutes, somebody says. Okay, anyways, the cord is usually cut, um, you know, and it's handed over to the pediatrician. Now what they will do once the baby <coughs> is out, here they are saying that you'll put the doins retractor back. <coughs> so all this happens, you know, the, the time that you make the uterine incision, uterine incision and the deliver it should should happen within 90 seconds. 90 seconds is one and a half minute. Right? So now what should come out guys? The placenta. Right? And membranes. So basically the placenta is separated spontaneously. The placenta you should not pull it and all that. <clears throat> you have to do traction on the cord. Right? In normal delivery they teach you control cord traction. Then You have to check if the placenta is perfect, right? You have to check for all its uh, parts and all cotyledons. Everything should be fine, right? Then. You will check if anything is there left in the uterine cavity, is it? So you will explore that. See, dilatation of the internal loss is not required. You are expecting her to bleed after this, is it? But they are saying you don't have to dilate. Let's move on. <clears throat> we have looked at these two photos. Here they are showing you how the placenta is coming out, guys. Now what you have to do? 
Suture. Very good. You have to suture the wound. Let us look at the photos and understand. Okay, that's the fastest way we can understand. Inserting of continuous catgut number zero suture, taking deeper muscles, um, excluding the decidua. So decidua is a part of what? The placenta. Actually, the decidua forms the maternal part of the placenta. Okay. So where are we here? So you are going to stitch this continuous suture, guys. Where did you see interrupted sutures? That was episiotomy, if you remember. But now we are talking about what, guys? We are talking about continuous sutures. You should do here. Okay, continuous sutures when you are uh, stitching on the uterus. Okay, then similar method of continuous suture. They are doing, uh, taking the superficial muscles and fascia. Okay. Then, continuous peritoneal cat cut suture. So, first they are talking about um, for deeper muscles, one suture. Then, for superficial muscles, another suture looks like. And this is for the peritoneal, peritoneum. Okay. So, just look at the explanation here in theory. So, they are talking about uterus being in the abdomen. Uh, some people are removing it and all uh, or event trait etc but here you just remember uterus is in the abdomen you will put first layer where we told about the uh, deeper muscles right excluding the decidua but here they are saying excluding or including the decidua which is very difficult to exclude okay then second layer superficial muscles adjacent fascia etc and third layer we told you was the peritoneum okay but there is no third layer heading itself here. And here they are saying that the peritoneal flaps may be opposed by continuous inverting suture. Non-closure of visceral and parietal peritoneum is preferred. Okay, now let's move on. After this, what will you do? You will uh, remove all the mops. You will count the number of mops. Then you will do toileting. That is, you will remove everything inside. Blood clots are removed, all right? Then you will examine the tubes and ovaries. You will remove the doyens retractor. See how many times you are putting it and removing it, right? Then... Uh, uh, you're checking that the uterus wall is contracted, that, then uh, there's no bleeding, etc. All that. Then abdomen is closed in layers. Abdomen you will close now in layers, right? Then vagina is cleansed of blood clots. And what else are you doing after this? Post-operative care. Post-operative care we will look in the next video. So now what we have done all the cuts, removed the baby, placenta, etc. Now we will, uh, uh, we have also put the sutures. Next video we will continue with the post operative care. Okay. Bye bye.